today we've got the purest sunshine ever. We had a thunderstorm coming through this morning at about 4 a.m. and now the air is so clean but really sticky and thick of moisture. Oh, wrong shirt. And welcome back to the in sunny hot Australia, guys. <laughs> we had just over 40 degrees Celsius in the last couple of days and the whole system runs really hot. I'm getting like 38 degrees in the battery now during the day during charging but it cools down to around 20 22 again during the night I think that's all good but still I don't want to stress the battery too much in this heat and I want to reduce the charge current and you have seen me doing this before well so what we can do is uh, go into your Victron connect app on your mobile phone and select one of the solar charge controllers the big shed for example it doesn't really matter just an example at the moment connect to it go into the settings battery and here you can see the max charge current is set to 60 amps even this is a 70 amp charger yeah so you can actually reduce the charging current the charger will put out to the dc system by adjusting this value this number so i can turn it down to 50 and now it charges maximum 15 amps into the system and if I do this for all four solar charge controllers, I have four times 50 amps, so 200 amps all in total would go into the system. Yeah? And this would limit the charge current into the battery banks to 200 amps altogether. But you have to log into every single solar charge controller and change this individually and probably remember all this and then take it out again if you need more current, if you want to charge faster. So this is a bit of a messy method to do and you are not using the full potential of your solar system because you are restricting the maximum available output of the solar charge controllers to four times 50 amps if you set it like this. So in today's video I want to show you a better method which I tested for a week now and this was recommended by one or two of my viewers here on the channel and I knew this function exists in the Victron system but I didn't expect it actually works without a smart BMS. And as you know, I've got the Overkill BMS, the JK BMS and the Helltech BMS set up in my battery bank, in my battery shelf. While they are kind of smart with the Bluetooth app and everything, they're not talking to each other or something. So they don't, they're not slow down charging when, when something is happening. So there's no communication or something. So, and here again, we have a look at the, uh, we have a look at the Victron VIM. So we, so we are charging with around nine kilowatt from the solar charge controllers at the moment. 700 watts is my AC load two kilowatts is my dc load and the remaining energy 6.1 kilowatt goes into the battery so this results in around 113 amps going into the battery divided by three this is around 34 34 amps per battery bank if they all get the same amount of current so 34 amps is totally fine. This is under 0.2 C, so it doesn't stress the battery at all. But um, well, if you have a look at here, the battery is already on 35.3 um, degrees Celsius, right? We've got 38 outside already. So the battery is actually warming up a bit. If I would use the solar charge controllers now to limit the current going into the battery to prevent it from heating up even more, I would need to go into each solar charge controller and throttle down the output current of each controller. But if I would then start charging the vehicle, for example, which I will do in a second here, it could then happen that we are using battery power, but because the solar charge controllers are not outputting enough power because we have restricted them. So, but there is, there is a better method of doing this. In the Victron system, there is an option you can turn on and configure. It's called DVCC. It's the distributed voltage and current controller. What's it, what, what it says here? And this is actually a pretty cool feature. And I was always under the impression we need to have a smart BMS connected to it because there is an option which smart BMS have you got connected to use the DVCC. But you can set this to none and it doesn't use a smart BMS. It just measures the current. And, and to access this, you go into your settings, settings, and there's already DVCC. So open this one up and you can see I have turned it on already. 
So there's a main button at the top to turn it on, and then there's a lot to configure. I don't know how all the other how all the other numbers work here, what they actually do. So I have only used the current limiter function of it. So it says limit charge current. And this is actually limiting our charge current into the battery only, but it doesn't restrict the output of the solar charge controllers. Well, kind of, but it does it automatically. Uh, let me show you. Okay, so get this all on one screen here. So if you, for the very first time, turn on limit charge current, yeah, watch the VRM on the left. I turn this one on now and it limits the charge current to 50 amps. And look what happens in the VRM on the left. There, there. Immediately, immediately you can see the charge current into our battery goes down to 14 amps only. 14 amps. And why is that? Because we have set 50 amps here. Well, if you have a look at the DC power output we are currently using for the Xia inverter and um, we've got the air condition running inside the house from the Xia with a long extension cable. It's a 1.8 kilowatt air condition we have there. And you can see the air condition draws already 36 amps, 35 amps DC, right? And if you add the 14 amps of the charging, you actually get to the 50. Yeah, so all my DC load, DC charging or DC load together will be these 50 amps. And of course you can go in here and change this value to anything else. So let's go on to 100, for example. Yeah, let's change this to 100 and confirm and you will see immediately the current, the charging current shoots up to around 23 or 90, 51 amps, 65 amps ramping up. We are still using the 2 kilowatt for the house and 63 amps into the battery. See, and this controls now the DC current. The downside of that is, as you have just seen, it calculates actually not what is going into the battery, but it calculates what is the DC output. What is the DC load you have? And load for the system is also charging. This is also taking away energy from the DC system. So charging and load. And this is surely not 100% optimal because usually the DVCC only limits the current going into your battery, not the whole DC current. The Victron system does know the solar charge controllers are delivering 1.9 kilowatts at the moment. It also knows we have an AC load of 660 watts so it knows how much amps actually going into the inverter. It also knows how many amps are going into the battery because of the smart shunt, right? But it doesn't know what our DC power or DC load is. This is just a calculation the Victron system does. So PV charger minus the AC loads minus what goes in the battery. Then it assumes the rest must be somehow some kind of DC power. And this is exactly why you see the DC power going up and down a lot, sometimes into a negative, because it's just a calculation from all the other values it has. And to overcome this problem, you can use another smart shunt and connect all your DC load to this smart shunt. So the Victron system then exactly measures what is your DC load. So this then gives the Victron system the exact amount of energy you're using for your DC system. And then, and then you have basically whatever current you set here, this will be your true charging current into the battery. But because I don't have this set up yet, it will split this maximum current we have set in the DVCC into our DC loads and the DC charging. But it's still super, super good to use. So you can say, well, you could achieve the exact same with throttling down your solar charge controllers too, to put out only 6.2 kilowatts, right? That is exactly true. But what happens if you turn on another load? Yeah, start the vehicle charger, irrigation pump or any more load turns on. Your solar charge controllers are limited to this 6.9 kilowatts and won't and won't deliver any more power. While with the DVCC here, let me show you what happens. We are charging the battery with 63 and 36 per 37 going into the house. Together this makes the 100 amp we have set here in the DVCC. So that's all good. So just keep the 63 amps going into the battery in mind. 
Okay, so we want to now start charging the test lander with 5 amps on here, right? 5 amps, start charging. And then we go quickly back into our VRM and have a look. We still have the 100 amps set here and the charging should start every moment. But this is AC load, right? This is AC load. So the multiplier should put out around 1.2 kilowatts more now. So, and here you can see the difference. Look at the PV chargers. They have already ramped up by around 1.1 kilowatts, right? They were in 6.2 kilowatts before and now they are on 7.3. But we are still charging the battery with 63 amps and uh, 36 amps going into the house for the air condition. So what it has done now, it has used the extra energy we have put on the system. It takes it now from the solar charge controllers. So let's go into the vehicle and ramp this up to say 10 amps. That will be 2.4 kilowatts AC load. And you will see the solar charge controllers are actually ramping up. And once this is all in balance again, we will see the 63 amps going into our battery again, if the solar charge controllers can deliver that much. There we go, there we go. It takes the extra energy we put on the system from the solar charge controllers. Because now we don't have any restrictions set in the solar charge controllers. They're all sitting on 70 amps, maximum power into the system. But we are only limiting the current going into the battery. And this is especially super useful if you have over paneled your system. You know, lots more solar panel installations as you actually need. Because you want to cater for bad weather, cloudy weather, winter season, winter time, your solar installation is actually far too big for summertime, but it's very optimal for the other situations with uh, cloudy weather and lower sun, for example. But with such a large and over paneled, oversized system, you would have a huge current going into your batteries all the time during summer. And if your battery is not large enough, it could actually cause an issue then because you are charging your batteries too fast. Not so much an issue with lithium iron phosphate or lithium batteries in general, but if you have still lead acid batteries, you need to control your charging current as well. So you cannot really over panel, oversize your solar unless you want to limit your solar charge controllers all the time manually. But with the Victron DVCC, you can set one charge current which goes into your batteries and it never exceeds that. Yeah, so you can connect another air conditioner or you can charge the vehicle or something while gently, gently and slowly charge your battery only. And to be honest, the first two weeks when I had the solar panels installed here, the battery was already full at about 10 to 11 in the morning because it charged so fast and then it throttled down the solar charge controllers anyway. And as you have seen in other videos, we have measured here 250 amps. I have seen 270 amps peak power going into the batteries. And this is a bit too much. This is, I, I don't like this situation. This is, not, this is not what we designed it for. And in summertime, I have to somehow limit the current which goes into the batteries. So if we go back into our uh, DVCC and let's go back to these Okay, let's go. Let's set it to 35 amps only, right? 35 amps. So there, there you can see it now. The battery is actually not charging anymore, but we are still outputting five kilowatt from the solar charge controllers, which goes into the um, air condition in the house and the vehicle charger at the moment. So we can actually control. So we are here controlling the current which goes into our battery but not the power output of the solar charge controllers. We still have the full 14-15 kilowatt peak here on the roof and we can still use them if we would connect that much load. But the, but the battery will get charged very gently and slowly. And only by adjusting this one value in the DVCC. And you can do this from your mobile phone wherever you are. You see the sun is coming out and, and the battery is getting charged far too fast huge currents go into your battery and you just go into the DVCC, turn on the current limiting option and set this one to 150 amps or something and then it limits your current. So I have usually set this one here in the, at the moment to 150 amps. It doesn't really matter. Yeah, 150 amps. And you will see the charging will start right away in the VRM, bang, charging. And the PV chargers are outputting 11 kilowatt now, three kilowatt in the car, 1.82 kilowatts in the house and 3.5 point something into the battery. 
takes a moment to adjust. And you can see again, we've got 100 amps into the battery and around 36 into the DC load. And now you could say, well, wait a minute, this is not 150 amps. But now we have reached the limit of our solar panels. So they are not able to output more than 11.3 kilowatts at the moment. So if we turn off the vehicle charger for a moment, we will now see the AC load will go away and we now have full output of 150 amps into the battery plus the DC power. There you go. 127, 123 and 73 amps into the house. But if we decide to charge again, we have the full power of the solar system available again. Isn't that a great option? I like it. And yesterday I had the DVCC set to 100 amps only and the air condition was running inside the house. I was at work and I checked it from time to time on the system and it charged like like 60, 70 amps into the three battery banks in parallel. And this was actually so slow, I couldn't fully charge the battery yesterday. So it, so it stopped actually at 85% state of charge. This was actually a bit too slow for getting a full charge. But it doesn't really matter if you've got enough storage anyway. See, and now the solar charge controllers are limited to 8.9 kilowatt automatically because we don't need more power at the moment or we don't allow more power going into the system at the moment. And there are also some other options here in the DVCC for um, the voltage, the maximum voltage you can charge your batteries with. And this is usually, I'll show you here, if you go all the way down um, here, there it says it's controlling BMS, no BMS control. And this is usually something the BMS tells the Victron system then. So if you have the um, Zeppelos BMSs, for example, connected to the Victron system and have DVCC turned on, the BMS of the batteries will tell the Victron system, for example, hey, I'm getting too hot, slow down, charging. Yeah. So the DVCC then limits the charge current going into the Zeppelos batteries. So you don't need to go into each of your solar charge controllers anymore and set this all up individually. This is all controlled in the DVCC now. This is so good, right? And I really appreciate that some people have left these comments under my videos and actually told me, Andy, turn on DVCC. And this is much easier than going into the solar charge controllers, which limits your available output. So if you now have a look in the Victron VIM and you can see the battery is charging fairly slowly actually, but it says we have got sunny weather here. This is the DVCC, the limiting current function we have turned on now to slowly charge the batteries and prevent they're getting even hotter by charging. You know, they're already warm enough here from the ambient temperature of um, around 37 for 38 degrees inside the garage here. I know the air condition is ordered. It's on its way. Because we've got plenty of power here, we can just waste it in the garage for an air condition. <laughs> yeah, that's what I will do. But at the moment, if I charge the batteries with like 70, 80 amps per bank, it will heat up the battery even further. And I don't want to do this. And I've got plenty of time. I can charge the battery slowly during the whole day. So this is the explanation of a low charging current while we have a super high output of the solar panels. And if you have a look at today, for example, by limiting the charge current into the battery, I have managed to keep the battery two degrees cooler than yesterday. Yeah, and this is what I have done for the last two weeks and I like it. I really like it. I haven't explored any of the other options of the DVCC, but I think as soon as we get the uh, Zeppelos batteries connected to the Serbo GX, we will go a little bit deeper into these um, into the DVCC and see what the actual functions are and what other benefits we get out of that. Okay guys, you can see it is pretty warm inside the garage here. I'll probably jump into the pool now for a moment. As always guys, thank you so much for watching and thanks for all your comments under my videos. As you can see, we are helping each other out here. Fantastic community. Thank you as well for everyone who has donated to the channel, to the off-grid garage, buying me a cold spat. I really need it at 38 degrees. And as always guys, until the next video, you stay charged, stay cool, stay safe. And thanks again for watching. See you then. Bye bye.